Hi, this is uh, Bro Steph, and tonight, um, I think the Lord's got a special word for us, and so I just wanted to take a minute and read Second Timothy chapter four, verses one through eight, and. Um, I was just thinking, you know, uh, today, in fact, about 10 minutes ago, I was just thinking about uh, what does the Lord want us to be doing as believers? What are the actions, you know, that he wants us to be involved in? And... Um, I think 2 Timothy 4 really describes where we're at in our culture and what our response needs to be um, from the Apostle Paul. And then also in uh, verses 6 through 8, Paul is being poured out. He, he, he says that he's being poured out like a, a drink offering. So you can imagine that he just felt like from being imprisoned under house arrest for so long and going up and back and and talking to the authorities and just in a bad place for for a a period of time and he just felt like you know what it's so it's over. My time to be with the Lord is at hand. And I just, you know, he just felt like I can imagine exhausted with it all. Um and and he has some really interesting observations in verses six through eight that I think it is really good for us to hear. So I just want to read, uh, I'll start at verse 1, uh, 2 Timothy 4. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, whom will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they'll heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables but you be watchful in all things Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. So in the very beginning of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, we see that Paul gives us some really good advice. And when I read that, as I'm reading it to you now, it, I, I can hear the words coming back at me. This is perfect advice for us today because the things Paul just described, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itchy ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to fables. I mean, is that not going on today? Is that not what's happening today? And then with all of this we saw over the weekend, uh, these poor people that were killed by this guy in, the, in this car at Virginia, and the, the white supremacists and all that they, they did over the weekend, I mean, just horrible things. I was, I was, I was, while I was praying, I was thinking, 
how horrible are we to, to one another as human beings? We fight. We argue. We kill each other. We, we harm one another. I mean, that reveals the depth of darkness that's in the human heart. And that's why we need Jesus. That's why we need a Savior. We need, you know, I'm not embarrassed to say to people, I need a crutch in my life. Life is just, life is just too hard. And I need a crutch. And Jesus is my crutch. I lean on him. He's my crutch. And he holds me up when I feel weak. He holds me up when I'm having a difficult time. And boy, do we need him now more than ever, don't we? And uh, so our response to the, the times we're living in, and I really believe Matthew 24, verse 8, we are living right now in the days uh, of the beginning of sorrows that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, 8. And I believe that, the, that our days are now the beginning of sorrows. And it's just going to keep, the sorrows are going to multiply. But while we're still here on this earth, God wants us, here it is, to convince, to rebuke, to exhort with all long suffering and teaching, long suffering, patience, perseverance, compassion. That's what the Lord wants from us. And then the final part that I wanted to read to you, which just always just fills my heart with a lot of faith. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departures at hand. Paul knew that he was shortly going to be home with the Lord. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Whoa. We have to fight the fight, we have to run the race, and we have to go all the way through that finish line. And there is waiting for us, from Jesus himself, our Savior, a crown of righteousness. The righteous judge, the only one that is qualified to judge, has a crown of righteousness and he wants to give it to us. And all we have to do is remain faithful. All we have to do is keep the faith and run the race and not give up. Perseverance, very important for us today in the days that we're living in. People feel like giving up. But for the believer in Jesus Christ, it's time for us to do even more. You know, a friend of mine uh, I found out yesterday hurt her back really, really bad. And so before I was praying, I was th sitting here thinking, you know, what can I do to help this friend to be a, a source of encouragement for this friend? And so it dawned on me, well, Send her a text and tell her you're thinking about her. And then the Spirit of God kind of moved on my heart. And and I just, and I'm telling you this, I'm not telling you this because I want any attention to myself. I really don't. 
I'm saying this and, and relaying what happened to me just 10 minutes ago so that you'll be encouraged to do the same. Well, the thought came into my heart, offer her to cook her some meals and to do cooking for her because I, I'm a pretty good cook, okay? And so it just came into my mind, offer to go, you know, if she would like some company, go over there, me and Carla and my wife, go over, spend some time, watch the TV, you know, just fellowship while she's on her back and she can't do much, cook her a, maybe breakfast or lunch, dinner, whatever. You see, what... What God wants from us as believers is to be doers of the Word of God. You know, there's a lot of talk going on today where people say to you, you go to church and, hey, I love you. But do we show it? Do we practice it? Do we live it out? Do we do things? Do we... Make the sacrifice of time to show people we love them. You know, that's what excites God, is that we're doers of the Word of God and we exercise our faith. So the word today, I think the word to all of us today is, Lord, help me to practice and live out my faith and to do the works of faith that please and honor you, that I might be a good witness to those around me, and that some of them might come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. That's the prayer. That's what we need to be doing. Doers of the Word of God, living out works of faith and love and kindness, it's what the world needs today. I'm telling you, that's what the world needs. There's too much hate. There's too much bitterness. There's too much darkness descending on this globe. We, the believers in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, we can make the difference by being like Christ in this world that's growing darker. Father in heaven, we lift up this time together to you, Lord, and we say thank you. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Thank you for showing us, Lord, that you want us to be doers of your word. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us the Holy Spirit to help us to convince to rebuke, to exhort, and to do it all with long suffering and to teach through patience and compassion and kindness, but that our lives would teach people about Christ because of the actions and the works that we do. Father, bless us and help us to be like Jesus. Lord, we pray for all of us that have friends and family and relatives, people that may not know you as their Savior, as the Savior and Lord, Father, I pray you save them, that you reach out to those in all of our lives that don't know you. Bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Save, Lord. Save all over the globe. And we want to especially ask that you'll save and reach out your loving hand of grace and salvation to the Jewish people, to your people, the apple of your eye. Father, touch this world before Jesus calls us home, and before that great tribulation arrives, save, Lord, save souls. That's what's got to happen. 
and use us, Lord. Use us. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our trespasses. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay. That's all I got for you tonight. Just kind of an off-the-cuff thing. The, I, I sense the Spirit of God moving in my heart. And I felt like the Lord wanted me to turn on Facebook and share what was going on with me, with you, and hopefully it will encourage you and and encourage your, your faith, encourage you to do the works of Jesus Christ in this world. I'll see you again soon. Make it a great evening. Love you. Appreciate you. I'll pray for you. You pray for us. God bless you, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. This is Bro Steph out.